Hey, Steve Bignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with something kind of cool, a 1978 Chrysler Cordoba Big Block. You gotta remember, you know, after 71, 2, 3, Big Block powered anythings were getting to be pretty uncommon. And for the most part, Big Blocks were seen in like Cadillacs, big cars, station wagons, trailer towers, very rarely in two-door personal luxury cars like the Cordoba. Now you gotta remember, the Cordoba, its bones are the same basic thing as a 71 Dodge Charger. It's the B-body platform. Uh, and it's the first time that Chrysler, big Chrysler, got a mid-sized car in 1975 when the Cordoba came out. So Cordoba went 75 through 79, but 78 right here, the final year for the 400 big block engine. Now, 1979 also brought stacked rectangular headlights. A 75 through 77 would be a round light, which frankly looks a lot like a 73 Chevy Monte Carlo. And there's no doubt that uh, Chrysler stylist absolutely had a good long look at the 73 Monte Carlo and said, let's go after that. And they sold it madly. In fact, these mid-sized Chrysler Cordobas came along at just the right time. The OPEC problem, the fuel crisis, the scare, killed sales of full-size Chryslers. And in fact, in 1978, there were 108,000 Cordobas sold. Meanwhile, only 66,000 full-size Newport and New Yorker Chryslers sold. If it wasn't for Cordoba, Chrysler would be in some big problems all through the 1970s. But the big thing here, beyond the, this is, here's the medallion, the Cordoba medallion right here. It's not a gold coin, but to Chrysler's credit, it ain't plastic. It kind of looks, you know, it's gold iridite, but again, it's kind of kind of wilted, and that's suiting, really. It's a suitable end for that. But under the hood, there it is. This is the 400 cubic inch big block. Now, the 440 was never offered in Cordoba, but with that said, it's often forgotten that the 400 was the base engine. This right here is a 1978 Chrysler Cordova catalog. And again, new for 78, the stacked headlights. We see them right there. And again, final year for the big 440. But here is standard equipment, 400, big block. There it is. Optional stuff, well, here it is. The 318 two barrel, the 400, of course, and a 360. So the small block 318 and 360 were available, but they weren't standard. The 400 was standard, crazy stuff. But inside, we can see that Cordoba was definitely not a muscle car, but rather, you know, personal luxury car meant for, uh, you know, maybe single people or folks with small families, aspiring professionals, lovers in love, right here, the lady with her fur coat on, the guy with his cool big cop hair. And of course, there's a stripper version right here with just the regular stamped steel wheel covers. But again, the Cordoba, 1975 through 79. Uh, really, it was a mid-sized Chrysler, although today it looks like a massive car. But this was basically, again, the mid-sized Chrysler B-body platform. And uh, the thing we see on this, again, is that 400 engine, big block distributor up front right here, a Carter Thermoquad underneath that uh, four barrel. Of course, the Thermoquad being a plastic bodied uh, carburetor, air conditioning fully loaded here, cold air. Yeah, that's basically like a W30 Olds 442 of 1966. Yep, cold air comes from up behind the grill. It's not about performance, and yet it kind of is because cool air is dense air, better for power and better for emissions too, by the way. Cruise control, loaded out. Lots of stuff on this one here. Now, a lot of people say that when I was a kid, I saw a Hemi-powered Cordova. Well, they probably were looking at this. This is popular hot rodding magazine right here, June of 82. And inside this is a story on a Hemi Cordova, but it was built by a guy. It says here, one physician who knows how to cure the blahs, Dr. Thomas Smith basically had this car built by a shop and they put a street Hemi in it. And it, apparently it says here, the original fuel tank was replaced with a 75 Cordova tank, which could be had with dual exhaust to accommodate the dual exhaust system within the frame rails. Because in 76, Cordobas went to single pipes and they had this uh, asymmetrical tank. But there's that 426 under the hood. It fits, absolutely fits, no problem at all, but not factory equipment. But you could have fooled me. But one of the things about magazines like this, a lot of guys say, I swear I saw one in, in popular hot rodding. Well, popular hot rodding isn't motor trend. Speaking of which, Canceled? What do you mean we're canceled? But see, Motor Trend, Car and Driver, and Road and, Tractor, uh, road and Track, and uh, Road Test magazines, they generally show you cars that are factory standard and can be purchased. But Hot Rod, Car Craft, Popular Hot Rod, they usually show hot rods, which are cars that are beyond stock. So that's the answer to that one. But as we make our way around this, we can see further evidence of its 400 cube status. The E64 code here on the fender tag E64 means big block 400. The emission sticker here says 400. So there's no doubt this is the end of the line right here 
for the mighty 400 big block. For 1979, the 360 small block would be the biggest engine available. And uh, this has 11 inch drums in the back, 11 inch discs up front, basically Charger RT, Hemi Charger 1971 braking equipment pretty much right here. Now, one thing that was added to the B body Charger, satellite, Roadrunner, etc., was a lot of rubber bushings. If you look right here, we'll see the K frame is not bolted solidly to the frame, but rock all that rubber. If you look right in here, that rubber biscuit right there is one at the front on each side and at the back of the K-frame there's another one right down here. That was added I think in 73 to all B-bodies and what it was meant to do was to isolate the body from road shocks and make it even quieter as the muscle was de-emphasized and the quiet was emphasized. The problem with that is when those bushings go away the front subframe and the front wheels tend to sort of have a life of their own. The car gets mushy. But again, the basic B-body bones are here with the addition of that rubber stuff, the ISO mounts, I think they call those, in 1973. But with that said, it's still basically a B-body. Come around this side here, and again, the classic two-door styling. There was no four-door Cordoba, there was no station wagon Cordoba, no convertible Cordobas, at least not from the factory. But inside we can see uh, the plush leather interior. This one has the column-shifted torque flight automatic. These could be had with a center console and a floor shift, but this one here, again, the 400 big block, yep, could get that with the column shift if you wanted, no problem at all. Ooh, a cassette tape on the front seat. What have we got here? Uh, remember cassette tapes? This is why we don't remember them. Right there, this stuff right here, that's not good. Now this one here is Genesis Live. Look at this, 1992, and throwing it all away. Somebody threw this 400 cube Cordoba away, listening to Phil Collins and the guys. Anyway, moving along to the back of this, here's that 11 inch drum at the back. Again, this is basically the same drum you'd find on a Hemi Super B or Charger or Hemi Cootie, 11 inch by two and a half in the rear. The leaf spring still in effect at the back. Yeah, this is a B body, uh, the 71 second or third generation B body. At the back, oh, look at this. The, the trunk lock is still there, but look at the Ross Perot for President sticker on the left hand side. Uh, Perot was a Texas oil billionaire who was notable for that sucking sound. You hear that sucking sound? He was mentioning the, the national deficit. He didn't win, but he was one of those upstart presidential candidates who kind of rocked the system a little bit. Anyway, in the trunk of this one, uh, again, the word commodious comes up and commode, no commodious, but here we have uh, interesting memories. Now this, you gotta remember that the Cordoba was also sold in similar, the Charger Special Edition, 1975. And you can see right here, the, absolutely, the Charger Special Edition essentially has the Cordova's bones, whole, just a tribute to it. Now, not quite as luxurious as a cheaper car, but again, introducing a very special Charger Special Edition. There it is right there, 1975. And again, Charger uh, went from a muscle car to a personal luxury car. But again, as a Dodge, it was less expensive than a Cordoba by probably about 20%. But again, the interior, all the stuff. And again, Dodge, uh, the Cordoba and Charger shared styling. Uh, a lot of people forget that. And getting back to uh, that, this is a Dodge Monaco, 1978. Notice the grill, totally different stuff. So the Cordoba, the same basic bones, but a different roof line. But underneath we can see, again, the leaf springs, the eight and three quarter, of course that axle's not quite, an eight and a quarter, single exhaust catalytic converter, there it is. And uh, the torsion bar front suspension on this 1978 Dodge Monaco. People forget these cars, but they made these things too. But getting back to the Charger name, yes, it even got used right here on the front wheel drive, K-Car. Very depressing times, but again, 1983 Dodge Charger and Charger 2.2. And they tried to sell these as muscle cars. Look at this, it says here, the Chargers performance driving machines that turn heads as easily as they turn corners. Simulated hood scoop. <laughs> You know, it was dark times. Again, there it is right there. This is the car that Dodge said went from zero to 50 in eight seconds, zero to 60 in 11. So in other words, it was kind of weak. But you got to remember that the uh, 55 mile per hour speed limit was a very real thing when the Charger 2.2 came along in 1982. So to say the car could go from zero to 60, well, you're kind of telling people to break the law because theoretically you can't go over 55. Just ask Sammy Hagar. He can tell you all about that. But that's the story of basically how 70... 78 right here, final year for a big block tire smoking 
Cordoba. 79 would be the final year for the Cordoba. Uh, the Dodge Magnum would also be along around this period of time. The Cordoba name would live on, but I believe in the L body, which was sort of a variant of the Plymouth uh, Velari Dodge Aspen, the F car type stuff with transverse torsion bars. So 79, final year for longitudinal torsion bars, biased leaf springs, the bones of the 71 Charger. But this one here, 78, final year for the tire smoke in 400. And you can bet from this corner right here, many, many times clouds of rubber smoke boiled as the driver of this thing punched the gas pedal and burned rubber with that 400 cube big block under the hood. And as we saw in popular hot rodding, there were at least one Hemi powered Cordoba, but never from the factory. Well, if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit the bell so you're aware of the next junkyard crawl video, which happens tomorrow morning.